Mama, mama, mama. So I would like to thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is John or Giovanna, and uh, and I would like to. Uh, <clears throat> so, King Crimson, standard former boss Diavolo. How does it work? Well, here's what we know. Its strength lies in its ability to skip forward in time. More specifically, erasing a period of up to 10 seconds. Anybody in the vicinity of King Crimson's attack will not remember what happens to them, nor what they did in this time period. Presumably there is a radius on this attack, or else there would be constant reports of mass amnesia worldwide, but I, I guess there's a chance nobody noticed. A anyway, the exception to this is King Crimson's user himself. Diavolo. During this period of skipped time, Diavolo has free reign to move around, reposition himself, usually behind the opponent, to strike from behind. However, there is a catch. During skipped time, all he can do is watch as others take their predetermined actions. He cannot influence them during skipped time in any way. Hence, he always resumes time before making his strike. He can only... Wait, wait a minute. He watches others take their predetermined actions, ones they were fated to do, which... Uh, ah! Right! Which brings us to Epitaph. Epitaph is King Crimson's sub-ability, which synergizes well with his time-skipping ability. Epitaph allows Diavolo to see a vision into the future, a constant running feed showing off everyone's fated actions. This window into the future is absolute. Possible to misinterpret, but absolute. The one exception is Diavolo himself, who at any point can choose to skip time, ignoring his fate. All right, so is everyone following so far? No. Uh, uh, th that's fine. I'll just... Uh, let's go over some examples. Here is a comprehensive list of every time King Crimson has had a recorded use. I feel the need to do this because if I didn't, I can't claim my explanation applies to every possible use case. There's 39 of them and I don't want to be here forever, so I'll have my associate hand out a pamphlet with each of them in detail for your own perusal. There's a link to an unlisted video in the YouTube info card for the rest of you. What? Now, while you're reading through all those, I- Who's Dopio? Uh, oh, that's- Wait, are you done reading already? Cases 15 through 22 all refer to a Dopio. Who is he? Y yes, yes, I know. I, I was just about to get to that. Dopio is essentially Diavolo again. A split identity. Two souls inhabiting the same body. Is Epitaph Dopio's stand? What? Dopio only uses Epitaph during the Metallica fight. Is that because Epitaph is Dopio's stand? Is that a talking turtle? His name is Polnareff and he's a tortoise. All tortoises can accurately be called turtles. Hey. Also, some turtles live on land. Alright, you- Also, this is definitely a turtle. It has sharp webbed claws. Might even be female. Hey, don't judge! Sit down! I never got up! You- <laughs> I have heard this epitaph is Doppio stand theory in the past. However, there is no material we have confirming this to be true. It is far more likely Diavolo, the more dominant identity, simply lent this aspect of his ability to the less dominant identity. Diavolo even directly states as such in a conversation he has with Doppio. Doppio needs permission from Diavolo to use King Crimson's abilities, but Diavolo never needs permission from Doppio to use Epitaph. How do you even know this when nobody else saw Diavolo's perspective? Please stop interrupting. Hey, you're the one pretending this framing device has any semblance of canonicity. No, I... Who are you anyway? Koichi's plus one. You got quite the impressive promotion since I last saw you, sir. Oh my goodness. Look, has everybody finished reading through the pamphlet? Yes. yes. Good. I'd like to move on from this extremely irrelevant topic. You just read through a comprehensive list of everything we definitively know King Crimson can do. Just so we're on the same page, can everyone agree that is true? No. Yes. All right, who said that? I heard that. No, spit it out. I did. And why? We can't assume King Crimson can do all those things you stated. You... What the hell are you talking about? Give me one reason why I shouldn't throw you out right now, Mr. Contrarian! Case number six. King Crimson showed Bruno his future self. This is an ability he never uses again, shown early enough, so we can't assume this ability was fully fleshed out by this point. It's very reasonable to assert this can't be part of his full skill set by the end of the series and instead was an early idea for an ability that got scrapped midway through the story. I see. Uh, well, we might as well start off here then. Case six. Bruno seeing a vision of himself. How can we explain this? You are right in saying it's not something Diavolo ever does again. However, there are circumstances present in this encounter which are not present in any of his other encounters. Diavolo had already thought he'd won, so decided to divulge an aspect of his ability to the already defeated Bruno, something he would never do in any other circumstance. What was the aspect of his ability he divulged? The ability to see a vision of the future, and what does he use to see into the future, as seen in later cases? That's right. 
Epitaph. We can likely conclude that Diavolo used Epitaph to provide the vision of Bruno's future self. But instead of projecting it onto the underside of his hair, he projected it in front of Bruno. You can't assume an image is being literally projected onto Diavolo's hair. If it were, how is he able to tell the future even when his hair is tied up in his first encounter? Case 2. Uh... Hey, I didn't do that. Plus, there are numerous points in which Diavolo is in a crowd of opponents using his epitaph ability freely. Cases 17 and 37. While none of them, not Risotto, not Trish, not Mista, noticed Diavolo looking at his hair, nor seeing or mentioning the epitaph vision at all. It's more likely the vision being projected onto the hair is not literal, and is instead a visual representation of the vision exclusively for the viewer's benefit, so that the story doesn't become entirely incomprehensible as Diavolo sees things the viewer cannot. Well, first of all, who says Diavolo's hair isn't down in his first encounter? All that's visible is a vague silhouette, and although there is definitely a shape to his body and visible details in his suit, it's intentionally very unrevealing. Everything important is cloaked in shadow. Perhaps his hair is actually down enough for him to observe visions through it. And even if that weren't the case and the projections on his hair aren't literal, who says that's not something he can't also do? That or everyone watching him use Epitaph just didn't see the projections on his hair. It's possible that very definitely wouldn't be their first priority, would it? So how are you going to explain Bruno watching his past body fade away like a ghost? Entirely inconsistent with the instant jump in time seen in every other time skip in the series. Well, one valid interpretation is Bruno did jump forward instantaneously after seeing the vision of his future self. But we as a viewer see the scene from Bruno's perspective, someone seeing the world warp around him, no knowledge of how the ability at play works, so comes with it a mass amount of confusion and disorientation. To him, it was as if he saw his old body fade away when in actuality he just saw his future self. Then time skipped and suddenly he was that vision he was just observing. Or King Crimson's ability wasn't fully fleshed out yet. Thank you for your contribution, I would like to move on. There are many cases we haven't talked about yet, and we haven't even talked in depth about his most important ability. His ability to skip through time. How does it work? The best way I can put it is this. Everyone has actions they are fated to do. Certain stand abilities make use of this fact. King Crimson's epitaph forecast shows everyone's fated actions, which all follow basic cause and effect. In several instances, the cause for these effects is literally Diavolo looking at Epitaph's vision in the first place. If it weren't for this, Doppio wouldn't attempt to cut off Rosato's foot in Case 18, and Diavolo wouldn't know what path to take to dodge all the bullets in Case 35. At any point, Diavolo can choose to use King Crimson to skip up to 10 seconds into the future, in which everyone's fated actions, as shown by Epitaph, will take place. The one exception to this is Diavolo himself, who instead has the freedom to move around to any point he pleases, and anything that would have happened to him is entirely ignored. This is how he manages to avoid Aerosmith's bullets in Case 23, as they were fated to pierce through his body, killing both him and Risotto. Why yes, I am still mad, thanks for asking. And this is also why King Crimson is required to resume time before he makes any attack, as any action he makes beforehand will phase through any opponent like a ghost. That, that doesn't- Don't worry, I've got this. That doesn't make sense, sir. What's the problem? Well, you see, it's the blood things. Sir, how is it Diavolo can blind Palmer if by flinging blood into his eyes? You said anything Diavolo does can't affect anybody in the middle of the time skip, but here is Diavolo doing just that. The blood doesn't go through Palmer F's body like Aerosmith's bullets. It's landing directly on his body. The same thing happens when he flings blood in your own eyes right before you defeated him with your own amazing ability, sir. <laughs> I was expecting someone to bring that up. Well, you see, there is a very easy explanation for that one. Just like how my blood stopped being part of my own body after after Diavolo cut my arm off, allowing me to turn my droplets into ants to eat through the shaft of the stand arrow. Oh, just like how Joski's blood stopped being part of his body, allowing him to strike Giri down with a piece of flowing glass. Remember that one, sir? Yes, he wouldn't shut up about it. Well, Diavolo's blood stopped being a part of him once it left his body, and although he wouldn't normally be able to touch another's body, his blood, which is not part of his body, can. How about that? No, that still doesn't make any sense. Uh, how so? I mean, I thought the whole point of the time skip world is that it's all based on what's fated to happen. That should mean anything that defies that fate, which would be the actions Diavolo chooses to take, should be entirely ignored, right? By that logic, there's no way the blood he flings from his body should be able to land on anything, unless that was something that was fated to happen. But if that were the case, you and Polnareff would have closed your eyes if blood was being flung towards it, right? 
Uh, but you clearly didn't, meaning your fate itself didn't see blood getting flung into your eyes. Meaning it wasn't fated to happen. Meaning that blood shouldn't have been able to land on either you or Pornoriff at all. Uh, okay, well, it did, though. The blood landed on Pornoriff's eyes in the time skip. There's not really much of a contradiction here. All it means is although things go through Diavolo's body, things no longer attached to his body can still touch things. It's not like it affects Ponoref during the time skip. He's acting as if he wasn't blinded at all. But when time resumes, he will suddenly find himself blinded because the actions that were fated to happen mid time skip proceed as fated with no changes, with the period afterwards then resuming as normal, now with a blinded Ponoref. It all checks out. What if Diavolo is wielding a spear? What? What if, like, what counts as being part of Diavolo's body? Why is his blood part of his body until it leaves him? Why do his clothes count as part of his body? They'd have to be or else they'd fall off the instant he time skips and turns ethereal. Ah, uh, well, yeah, his clothes obviously count as part of his body. So what about what's in his pockets? What about what he's holding? What if he's wielding a spear? Why a spear? If he's wielding a spear and tries to swipe someone with it in the middle of a time skip, it obviously wouldn't do anything because he'd be affecting fate with his own actions. He'd just go through them. But what if he threw the spear? Does it stop being part of his body just like his blood? Would it therefore stab anyone he throws it at? Why doesn't he therefore have a ton of spears on him? Why doesn't he use spears like all the time? Uh, well, I guess... No, no, okay, no. The spear and maybe the stuff in his pockets wouldn't even follow him in skipped time at all. We never even see Diavolo having any objects on his possession at all when he skips time in the final fight. Maybe he literally can't, with his blood being one of the rare exceptions. And his clothes? Yes, his clothes are also- Even if his clothes were made up of small sharp objects. Okay, what? What if his clothes were made up of a series of chainmail-like knives? That way he could take individual knives and throw them during time skips, in which they would no longer be part of his body and affect other bodies like his blood does. But- Or I mean, just like how his blood wouldn't immediately blind someone, the bodies he throws the knives at wouldn't even realize they were stabbed until time was resumed again, in which they would go, Oh, I've been stabbed so suddenly! But the point is that that's not what he does. Maybe he tried that too. Maybe he can't bring sharp objects into skip time. Maybe he very specifically wears clothes that don't fall off his body when he skips time. Why doesn't he smother people in his special non-falling off clothes? He clearly has more than one outfit. Just skip time and throw a shirt on everyone. That's not the- This is all irrelevant! It's not really reasonable to assume this is a problem BS at all though, since nothing like this is ever brought up in the text of the source material. Okay! So maybe Diavolo just didn't think to bring a spear into skip time then! Well then he's an idiot. Sure he's an idiot! Jeez! Sir? <sighs> Yes, Koichi. Even if the spear- Please stop talking about the spear. No, this won't take long. Even if the spear isn't able to interact with people because it phases through them like a ghost, what's stopping him from resuming time while the spear is still inside them? That's still a stabbed body whether he needed to pierce flesh or not. You know what? Two possibilities. One, Diavolo is in fact a massive idiot who seriously never thought to try to do that, which I guess is on the table now. Or two, the spear force ejects itself from the body he's trying to pierce as he resumes time. Maybe the spear shatters. Or some other fourth thing. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's very possible to speculate on the edge cases of a spear that doesn't exist. Can Diavolo walk through walls? What? I mean, if he turns into an ethereal ghost when he initiates a time skip, what are the limits on that? If he phases through things like Aerosmith's bullets, what's stopping him from walking through a wall? Uh, I mean, the, uh, the ground, the ground. If he were able to phase through walls, he'd phase through the ground. So, uh, there's some sort of threshold where some things face through Diavolo and other things are entirely solid. Maybe it depends on if the object is moving or not. Technically the whole world is constantly in motion, hurtling through space at thousands of miles per... You brought it up. What if a building is collapsing and he's inside it? Does he not get crushed by the rubble? Well, I mean, I guess he might. Ah, here you go. Another potential explanation. What determines whether or not Diavolo will phase through something is if what he's interacting with has a soul or not. Anything without one, like walls and the floor, are entirely solid to him. Perfect! An explanation that even jives with several stands' notable connection to souls, like mine or Chariot Requiem. Certainly a lot more preferable to an explanation that introduces arbitrary exceptions with no basis or precedent in the source material for when said explanation so happens to feature some sort of contradiction. Do animals have souls? Yes, 
of course they do. Do plants have souls? Oh, zip. It. Do plants have I souls? I refuse to engage in this hypothetical! Chariot Requiem didn't interact with any plants. Do bullets have souls? No! So he should have been shot by Aerosmith's bullets. Those were stand bullets! Oh, you hear that? Doesn't count if they're stand bullets. Nothing arbitrary about that. All right, fine. It's not the souls thing, but he definitely can't walk through walls. Is the walls breaking away thing diegetic? You know, when he activates his ability, all the terrain around him collapses and breaks away. If the walls aren't there anymore, then what's stopping him from walking past one and then resuming time? Look, Diavolo's ability is skipping through time. He only ever uses it for time manipulation purposes. If he could walk through walls, he would. But he doesn't, so he can't. The terrain thing might be diegetic, it might not be. It doesn't matter, because either way, Diavolo can't walk through walls. I refuse to dwell on this any further. What happens if Diavolo chooses to ignore what he does in his vision? You know, there wasn't supposed to be any audience participation. I had, like, a whole thing set up. I could just keep going as I had originally planned. All right, I'll bite. You may elaborate. If Diavolo watches himself moving to the right in an epitaph vision, what's stopping him from moving to the left instead? Well, he can't. At least not without using time skip to ignore his fate, but we're talking about an example where he doesn't. Epitaph's vision is inextricably tied to fate, and if he's fated to move to the right, then he must move to the right. If he wants to move to the left, some sort of force or circumstance will result in him moving to the right instead. Well, can't he just change his fate? Doesn't seem too difficult to me. I see the issue here. This is a bit of a misconception. Fate in this universe is very explicitly defined. Little to nothing can change it. You are proposing whether or not Epitaph's vision has the chance to be inaccurate. It cannot. In case 18, that appears to almost be the case. Originally it shows Doppio's foot being cut off, when Risotto's foot is the one that ends up being cut off. There is no inaccuracy in this vision. It was originally, and always, Risotto's foot. Doppio's fate never changed, and Epitaph was never wrong. I mean, it couldn't be wrong, because otherwise the synergy between Epitaph and King Crimson's time skip would be less than useless. The whole point of Epitaph is it allows Diavolo to know when to use the time skip ability and what will happen when time resumes. <sighs> Yes, Koichi. So Diavolo can't interact with things during skip time? Yes. So how is he able to pack up all the things during skip time when the hotel lady intrudes on him? Oh, oh my god. All right, let's explain this one. Case 12. Hotel cleaning lady intrudes on Diavolo. Within the space of a time skip, he manages to pack up all his things and escape. However, by all accounts, this shouldn't be possible due to his inability to interact with any objects during skipped time. At this point, I would like to formally propose a new element into my explanation of this ability. Diavolo's own fated actions. Specifically, what he was going to do if he didn't skip time. This, I feel, is the only way we can explain several use cases of the time skip ability. Anything that was fated to happen will happen, including if Diavolo was the one to influence it. How did he grab all his things and leave the hotel? That's the thing. He didn't. His fate was to grab all of his things and leave, but he skipped past that point in time. So although he erased that period of time from happening, the results of his original actions still remained. Theoretically, if we were to see this from Diavolo's perspective, he might see all the hotel objects floating out the window as the original fate Diavolo would be doing. Unfortunately, we never see his perspective during these key moments, so we can only speculate. However, this explanation does account for every possibility. Yes, even including, dare I say, the Coliseum Arch Incident. Case 31. No, Diavolo cannot choose to stab my body in the middle of skipped time, but he must have seen through Epitaph that he was already fated to do so, and skipped that period of time, only leaving the result. The result being what he would have done even though he skipped past that period of time. Any results from skipped time that affect his own body are completely ignored, but as for everybody else, say my body getting stabbed, the result remains. <sighs> Or... Oh no, what now? Or the more likely answer, the writer conflated King Crimson's time skip ability and the world's time stop ability and didn't think too hard about it. Oh, Jojo's ability, right. It would make perfect sense if it was as if it were time stop being used. Should I even bother asking? Time stop is comparatively extremely straightforward. Time stops and the user can act within it for a short period of time, while from outsider perspectives it's as if their actions were instantaneous. This conflation explains cases 1, 3, 4, 
4, 5, 10, 12, 13, 14, 24, 25, and 33. All right, you smart aleck. Which are all cases that don't make any sense when you consider several seconds of time have passed between them, but make perfect sense if you just pretend he used the world instead. It's rather convenient that all of these cases are ones we don't see from Diomo's perspective, isn't it? It's because it wouldn't make any sense if we did. Well, you can't say that for absolute certain. Say, for example, case 24. Polnareff's flashback where he fights Diavolo on top of the cliff. Diavolo does what he always does. Skips time, repositions himself behind the opponent, and strikes as time resumes. Entirely consistent with how his ability is explained and how it is seen in the rest of the series. Polnareff begins a swipe at King Crimson, but before the swipe is finished, Diavolo appears behind Polnareff as if no time had passed. King Crimson is all about erasing time. How do you explain that? Ah, well, regarding that, oh, I can explain this one. What? Who said that? I did. Uh, and who are you? I'm you from a parallel dimension. One where things went slightly differently. How the hell am I talking to a parallel dimension version of myself? Oh, there was this funny pink man and whatever, it's not important. Polnareff never made that swipe in my timeline. That was a mistake only made in the anime adaptation, so it's not necessarily fair to call it a mistake in the source material. Same can be said for case 14, where the alleyway that Fortune Teller was killed in was entirely cleaned up in front of the little child bystander's eyes. Didn't happen in the manga. Okay, uh... Sure, I guess. That. As for the other cases, I mean, it's very possible everyone was fated to stand exactly where they were for the duration of the time skip. It's not necessarily a contradiction, just a bit of an improbability. Also, although it's a bit inconsistent, debatably, Polnareff is a tortoise in my universe, especially if you take the Eyes of Heaven adaptation into account. Uh, uh good. Uh, in fact, I am glad, even. Um, sir? Yes, Koichi? What about the elevator scene? What do you mean, what about the elevator scene? Well, your explanation for how Diavolo can interact with objects in the middle of skip time is if he was fated to do it himself. Correct. So the only way he could steal Trish from the elevator is if he was fated to do it and erase that bit of time. Correct. So, what about Bruno? What about Bruno? I mean, we have to talk about Bruno. What was he doing during the period of skip time? From our perspective, he must have stood entirely still or else he would have realized time had been skipped. But why would he stand perfectly still, sir? Well, nobody can keep track of Diavolo in the middle of skip time, so they followed their fated actions while Diavolo can move wherever he wants. Nobody realizes he's doing so. But sir, that's only ethereal Diavolo. The Diavolo that can't interact with anything. Diavolo's fated actions are what can interact with things in skip time, which would be the Diavolo that can try Trish's hand off and take her out of the elevator. The Diavolo that Bruno would be able to see. He wouldn't remember what exactly happened when time resumes like normal, but surely he wouldn't stand absolutely still as Diavolo breaks into the elevator, dismembers his daughter, and leaves out the roof, right? He'd either be staring at the dismembered hand, staring at the hole in the roof, or already following Diavolo. But he's not. He's staring blankly at the elevator wall. How does that make sense, sir? Ah. The hole in the roof isn't even there in the manga, by the way. Okay, okay, right, okay. Well, the, um, well, what if Butrati didn't move from his spot because his movements were predetermined by what he intended to do beforehand. He didn't know Diavolo would burst through the ceiling and steal his daughter, so it was like he was on autopilot. He autopiloted through the time skip and didn't have the chance to react until the time skip was finished. That's also why, uh... In case 28, Diavolo is at the bottom of the stairs, and despite him clearly starting to jump up the stairs before initiating the time skip, Polnareff autopilots through his previous action, which was watching his blood drip from his hand. Um, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but that still doesn't make any sense. Oh, boy. If that were the case, then what about when Abakio got off the boat, sir? Case number eight, sir. He didn't want to get off the boat before the start of the time skip, but when the time skip was over, he was already on land. He made the decision to leave the boat during the time skip, so surely there's no such thing as going on autopilot just because time was skipped. Well, he stepped forward the instant before we see the time skip, so maybe he made the split-second decision to get off the boat right before the skip started. He doesn't make that step in the manga. You, all right, if you claimed your precious manga is the definitive version of this universe, why don't you come up here and do this talk for me? All right, maybe I will. <laughs> I don't think the universe liked that one. Yeah, never mind. You're on your own. I think we're asking the wrong question. I mean, I think the question we got to be asking is what did Diavolo see on Epitaph right before stealing Trish away? Well, he saw himself stealing Trish from the elevator, obviously. He had to have, otherwise he wouldn't initiate the time skip in the first place. So what was Bruno doing in Epitaph's vision? 
Uh, he must have been doing something. Whatever he was doing in Epitaph's vision is what he was fated to do. Cause and effect dictates it has to have been absolutely anything. But he doesn't move an inch. The only explanation is time finished skipping and Bruno just so happened to have been looking at the elevator wall in the exact same position he was before his companion was ripped from his side. But what are the chances of that? Well, to be fair, the chances of that are rather higher than normal, since Diavolo looking at Epitaph's vision, as was previously established, inherently influences the future in his favor, since he has the ability to act in the most optimal way possible from it. Him looking at Epitaph's vision is how he can dodge all of Mises' bullets in Case 35 is an example. There you go, now it all makes sense. <sighs> Or his ability was completed with the world's time stop. Oh, shut it. Hey, you tell me which outcome is more likely. The scene was written with all of that overbaked nonsense in mind, or it was a minor lapse of judgment in a story that never focused too hard on the minute details in the first place. What do you think is more important in a story? Following every single rule originally stated on page one of a long ongoing narrative, or delivering a cool scene where a companion is ripped away from under the protagonist's nose, allowing him to finally understand and confront the villain's motive and motivate him towards his true goal. Well, you may very well follow that train of logic, but I personally consider that a bit thought terminating and like you're not willing to engage with the actual puzzle laid before us. We're not asking why the story was written this way, we're asking how this ability works based on the information we were given. Sounds a bit like moving the goalposts to me. Alright, I think we're done here! Thank you all for coming along, I hope you now all have a better understanding on how King Crimson West. We <laughs>